Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, looks like we'll try out Mono Black. So there's a lot of ways to build Mono Black. We can go with a more aggressive uh, version, we can go for a more mid rangey version. Do we want to go low to the ground and aggressive? Take advantage of cards like Knight of the Ebon Legion, even though we can still play Knight of the Ebon Legion in a more controlling deck, of course, uh, since it's still just a good late game card. But then we would be looking at cards like Gutter Bones as well at one mana. Uh, do we have any other one drops that are good? Not really, so it's mostly those two. So an aggro deck maybe doesn't look too enticing at the moment, but maybe we'll get some more cards in Eldraine. So I think going a bit more mid-range is the way to go here. So let's go with four knights. Can probably still fit in a couple disfigures, don't know if we want all four, might be a bit much. Then we definitely want our uh, four mana dread presence. There we go. Alright, so this is going to be kind of the starting point of our deck. And now we can go in a lot of different directions in terms of removal. Legion's Ends is probably something we want in small numbers to deal with small creatures and tokens. Don't know if we want all four, but I'll start with two for now. Does Dreadhorde Invasion do anything? Seems a bit on the slow side. Without any sacrifice synergies, it's not the most exciting card. Like with Dreadhorde Invasion, you want to do two things. Either you want to sacrifice a 1-1 one -one token every turn, or you want to build up a giant army and get more synergies with a mass. There's also the new 3-mana Planeswalker in Eldraine that turns creatures into 3-3s. Three that could synergize with the uh, mass token too, I think, because it also loses the creature type, if I get that correctly. So then you could like make a 4-4 every turn, the Oko Planeswalker, so some sort of Sultai deck with Invasion and Oko. But yeah, we can't play those two together quite yet. But yeah, that's maybe something to keep in mind. Fenlurker is still an okay 2-drop that we could play as a bit of value. Like, it's similar to the Knight with the Mana Sink ability to pump it up, but it's actually a decent card. Like, it's usually going to be trading for a relevant card from the opponent and leave a creature in play. So yeah, Fenlurker could be okay at 2. Yeah, if we want to go more aggro, then Gutter Bones and Spawn of Mayhem would be cards I want to add. But we're trying to go a little bit more mid rangey with this one. So Midnight Reaper is an option, as it plays with like the cheap creatures that tend to trade off. So could play a couple of those. Uh, might see fewer copies of Crime of the Carnarium nowadays, which makes the Reaper better. Oh yeah, we probably want Liliana at 6 mana. We'll get to that in a second. And Liliana also plays well with the Midnight Reaper and the Fun Lurker, part of the deck. Don't think we're going to want Regisaur, since we're trying to hold cards in hand to get up to 6 mana to cast our Lilianas. Playcrafter has a bit of synergy with Fenlurker and Reaper, but overall probably still a bit too weak. Don't think we need Murder. Elder Spell could be a great sideboard card, but I don't know if we want it in the main deck. Don't think I'm going to play Blood for Bones if we're not actively trying to reanimate anything. Cavalier of Night could be okay with uh, Fenlurker too. Uh, Massacre Girl could be great, especially with Fenlurker as kind of a 1-1 creature that sets it up to maybe wipe the board. So I'm kind of into two copies of Massacre Girl here. And then maybe two Cavaliers could be fine. Uh, I think Drillbit is going to be much better for more low to the ground. So I would play Drillbit in the aggro build of Mono Black. I don't think I want it in the more mid-range build, since it's going to be more difficult to enable Spectacle. Bontu at 5 could be an option. Although for trying to cast Liliana, like Bontu is at its best when it's the curve topper in our deck, where we can easily sacrifice a bunch of lands. But if we're also trying to play Liliana, then I can't play turn 5 Bontu and sacrifice my land, since I want those lands to cast my Liliana. So while Bontu is a good card, I don't think it's going to be at its best in this build. And Massacre Girl and Cavalier seem like nice options instead. Uh, so yeah, Bolas Citadel could be pretty good as another curve topper, so I could go like two Citadels, one or two Lilianas. Although though, we gotta make sure the curve still looks decent. And the lifelink from Cavalier and from Dread Presence also helps to offset the Bolas Citadel drawback. I don't think we're commanding. 
So two Lilianas. The problem now is that we have four six drops and four five drops, which is a bit much. But we can probably like fit in 25 lands pretty easily. And maybe add some more like ramp or card draw to make sure we can get to it in time. So is there anything that can ramp us that is not too embarrassing to play? So then we probably got to look at the artifacts. Any other hybrid cards? I could play Discovery Dispersal for just Discovery. Yeah, we could play Chromatic Lantern. Although the mana fixing part doesn't do much. So maybe there's a better one. Oh yeah, the new old Rain Banner, that's a good point. I'll take a look at that in a second here. I guess we could just play Golos at 5-2, play Chromatic Lantern, and not play some of the other fives. But is that what we want to be doing? Because Golos is kind of its own payoff. Yeah, I don't think we want to go down the Golos path. So yeah, Cabal Stronghold is rotating too. That's in Dominaria, so we can't play that in the 2020 event. Let's take a look at the banner. So as it enters the battlefield, choose a color, black. Creatures we control of the chosen color get plus one plus so, great. And we get to add one mana, so this seems like a pretty great addition for this deck. It both ramps us and pumps our creatures, two relevant things. So yeah, I'm kind of digging this. Seems much better than Chromatic Lantern. Or of the Midnight is also an option, but it, it's more of an aggro card. So this card could be quite good in mono black aggro, but it doesn't fit into the game plan of mono black midrange where we want to drag out the game and resolve our powerful curve toppers since this doesn't block. Eternal Taskmaster, that's an interesting suggestion. Also more strikes me like a card that would be better in a more aggressive deck where we have more cheap creatures to return and where the drawback of coming into play tapped doesn't matter as much. In a more mid-rangey shell, we want our uh, creatures to be able to block right away if possible. So we're almost there. So 25 lands for Heraldic Banner gives us a decent bit of ramp for these expensive cards. I guess at this point I wouldn't mind having some more cheap creatures to go with the banner and to play defense or just more removal. Some removal for Planeswalkers would be nice. Um, I guess Spark Harvest, but then we need Sacrifice Fodder, which is kind of iffy. Yeah, I guess I could play one Elder Spell. Price of Betrayal seems pretty bad. I guess I could always play Playcrafter that also deals with Planeswalkers. I don't think I want to play the Color Hosers in my main deck, unless the metagame gets uh, really strange. But this would be an excellent sideboard card for sure. So I think we're mainly looking at Playcrafter plus maybe some more cheap creatures to sacrifice. I could go with like a couple Elder Spells as a hedge, but they're going to be dead cards in some matchups. Vampire of Dire Moon at 1 is an option. The Enforcer is also an option as a good defensive creature. Maybe that's the way to go here. Also, the way the Enforcer works with Massacre Girl. Let's say there's a One Toughness creature and an Ors of Enforcer. And we play Massacre Girl. So the Massacre Girl is going to happen. Give everything minus one, minus one. Then the 1-1 one, one dies. Triggers again. Then the Enforcer dies. Then I think I remember seeing the afterlife token get generated and then still die to the massacre girl trigger and that's just gonna help us wipe the board even more so that's actually a good thing i kind of like that interaction too if we have like a fan lurker an enforcer and a massacre girl we can kill even up to a 4-4 creature so i think i like having the enforcer partly for that reason too i could play more midnight reapers or play crafters now that we have the enforcer as an extra creature too uh, also plays well with the Cavalier. We're a bit low on interaction for Planeswalkers now, so I could just add one Elder Spell as a Haymaker, or I could add more Playcrafter synergies to try and make that work. Also, cool thing about Banner is that we get to go turn 3 Banner, and then turn 4 play Presence and play a Swamp. So Banner does actually quite a bit for the deck. We could play Blast Zone. It's a bit of a nombo with the Dread Presence, but it could be worth it just to have us utility maybe as a one or two off, and then if we happen to have Blast Zone in our opening hand, we can make sure to play it first. So how about two Blast Zones? 23 Swamps should be plenty. So what am I doing with these last couple slots? I can move some cards around, cut the Legion's end completely, and make room for more Midnight Reapers or Playcrafters. Yeah, no more Vraska's Contempt, sadly. I mean, the Legion's End is great against tokens, but we've got Massacre Girl for that now. 
So maybe I don't need the Legion's End, and I just get to play a couple Playcrafters to help me deal with uh, Planeswalkers. And those synergize well with the Reaper too. And then I can just play a third Disfigure as cheap removal. I could play a third Reaper, a third Playcrafter. Those seem appealing. And then Playcrafter also plays well with Cavalier. So I kind of like this more. Yeah, we could also consider playing the 4-mana Karn. But then we need to work on an artifact package. I mean, the fact that we can play or find Bolas a Citadel with Karn, I guess, is kind of nice. So maybe we should uh, consider Karn. So what artifacts are, like, super interesting to get besides Citadel? Like, I guess, Cage against uh, Graveyard decks. Yeah, Field of Ruin is rotating. I'm not seeing a ton of artifacts that I would want to get with Karn. So maybe I'm better off just having the Bolas a Citadel main instead of Karn and then get the Citadel. Yeah, Immortal Sun is rotating out. We will get a reprint of Sorcerer Spyglass, but it's not in this event. So while it could be a good idea once we get Eldrain, for now I don't think we want Karn. Commanded Redhorde could be a powerful curve topper, but we already have Liliana and Citadel, so I think we're okay at 6. So let's just add another Disfigure and call it a day. I guess one thing to maybe think about is how do we interact with the blue-green flash deck. We only have Disfigure as instant speed removal, everything else is sorcery speed, but I guess just playing a turn 1 Knight of the Ebon Legion is pretty good against them. So that's the plan. Hope they tap out at some point and then try and resolve like a Dread Presence or a Bolas a Citadel. But yeah, Murder would be good against the flash deck as a way to kill the Knight Pack Ambusher end of turn. But I don't think we want it in the main deck. So yeah, I think we'll give this a shot. 25 lands, including two Blast Zones. Blast Zones also good against those types of decks, since we can just charge it up and then destroy their creatures without putting a spell on the stack. Toll of the Invasion, it's not a bad suggestion. As a bit of hand disruption that makes a token that synergizes with the Playcrafter. Could be okay, but I'm kind of digging the 4 of Banner, just to have more ramp, and it plays pretty well with a lot of our creatures. Don't really see anything I'd w I would want to cut, plus it also doesn't synergize with Cavalier as well as an actual creature. Alright, this hand is hoping to draw into our late game cards. But Enforcers plus Banners are pretty good. And even have the turn one Disfigure. Don't know if there's a great reason to wait. It's not like they're gonna put a Maniacal Rage on it. I could have not disfigured there since the Enforcer blocks the Spitter pretty well. Especially considering we we're gonna play Playcrafter soon, getting rid of the small creature to maybe open up Playcrafter to kill a Spitfire is nice. Yeah, Ugin at 6 could be reasonable as a way to deal with uh, like artifacts and enchantments, or I guess enchantments for the most part, that our deck otherwise doesn't really do all that well. So that's a reason to maybe want Ugin. But I think the card draw from Citadel is more important, and Liliana seems like just too good, especially now that we've added the Enforcer package. So a Light of the Stage and Carnival Carnage. Feels like I just want to play an Enforcer. Ooh, I see. Attack with the Spitter to get in one damage and then kill my blocker. That's a cool play. Sandwich Sprint, eh? And it even pumps our Spirit token, which can start attacking. Heraldic Banner seems like st such a strong card. I see, Steamkin even has a new animation that I hadn't seen before. So they're gonna Sandwich Sprint, we're gonna trade, and then Playcrafter can maybe finish off the Steamkin. Ooh, 
Ooh, hello. All right, that's a good one to have on top. So it's going to be a race. So I can play Crafter to sag the spirits, but I'm not making my opponent discard anything. So I think I'll just wait. So this is where we want to draw one of our heavy hitters. Oh yeah, I probably should have been holding some swamps in case I top deck Dread Presence. That was a mistake to play that one out. Alright, sweet. Alright, this hand has two of our top end cards, which is a little awkward, but we have some okay early plays to make, so I think we'll try it. This hand would love to draw lands and banners. That's also a card we could be playing, Lasso Tap Reaver, since it makes two creatures that play well with the banner. I speak of the devil here. So now I want to play Blast Zone into banner, into this figure. Look at that efficiency. Banner also just plays well with this figure and other one mana spells. Savvy Hunter. Hmm, drawing another citadel, not great, but I guess I can start pumping my fan lurker now. Or do I just keep it on defense? I guess I keep it on defense. Just want to protect my life total and uh, yeah, resolve one of my six drops and hopefully win the game. How good do I think banner will be in limited? I think it's going to be quite good. And it's maybe going to incentivize people to build monocolor decks more often. Ooh, that's a good one. Alright, need a land here. So Liliana Minus is an option. It's not exciting, but it cleans up the board. Probably plusing is even better. My army will envelop this world. Reason to Minus is if we suspect our opponent can kill Liliana somehow. But yeah, Liliana plus Banner is also pretty strong. Alright, Sir Conrad, that's fine. So now I'll Citadel. If I minus now I get to sack both Enforcers and make a bunch of Spirits and draw cards. Probably still better off plussing. A nice 4-2 zombie. Right. Uh, sure, I'll attack. Should have enough on defense. A Legion Sand would be good against me here with double Enforcer, double zombie. I'm getting close to just activating the Bull of the Citadel for 10 damage. Probably still just plus Liliana. Also can't forget about my blast zone. Can work that up towards two. 
If I minus my Liliana, I can sack Enforcers to make Spirits, draw two cards, and maybe get more value from my Citadel, which is also reasonable. Like, am I planning to win the game with the Liliana Ultimate? What happens if my opponent casts a Find Finality next turn? They get to make a giant Conrad. Uh, I'll still be left with the Spirit Tokens afterwards. So it's not too bad. Uh, it's just plus. It feels like I can't do anything that's too bad here. And then I guess I still want to be attacking. Probably should have attacked first. Keep the Enforcers back, attack with the 4-2s. Like, this way they can attack my Liliana potentially, but I doubt I'll take 8. And I can always use the Blast Zone to kill the Gutter Bones. What if I had an instant on top? I could cast it with the Citadel now. Alright, 2-2 two, two Flyer. Sure. So... What am I um, sacrificing here? Probably an Enforcer. Very close to winning with the Citadel here. So I should have the Citadel win. Those were some pretty sweet games with our uh, mono black deck. Let's do one more run. Alright, so bit land lights, only two lands, but we're on the draw. Plenty of early plays. Yeah, I'll try it. Well, not the draw steps we were hoping for so far. Is this a teamer reclamation, maybe? I guess it's got to be a gate deck if they're playing Is it Guild Gate, otherwise, they would be playing uh, the Gain Land. Maybe a five color Golos deck. So on the one hand, I want to play Playcrafter to add a bit more pressure. I guess I probably should have then pumped a Fun Lurker for one extra damage. But I might want to keep this to like make them stack a Golos if they play it next turn. But yeah, probably should have just pumped a Fun Lurker if I wasn't going to play the Playcrafter. Mm, there's Golos. So what are we getting? Are we playing Field of the Dead as well? We are. Not a Golos. So we're definitely behind. Those Field of the Dead are going to be somewhat difficult to fight through. I could have also sacked the Playcrafter itself instead of Fan Lurker, so I have a One Toughness creature for Massacre Girl to sweep up all the zombies. That would have been reasonable. I think I still want to draw cards here so I can set up Massacre Girl plus this figure. Uh, 
Uh oh. Finds a third field of the dead. Yeah, I don't think we're beating that. We're just not going to be able to outvalue our opponent making uh, three zombies per turn. Sending in Golos. That's interesting. So I can disfigure Golos and block, or I can double block. Uh, but now with Massacre Girl coming up, I can just wipe the entire board. So Dread Presence on a 2-2. Play Crafter on Golos, maybe I draw a Swamp and get more value from the Dread Presence while I have it available. And then hold on to the Disfigure for later. Alright, so I'm forced to Massacre Girl here. So yeah, Field of the Dead seems like a rough matchup for our deck. But that's usually the case, the ramp deck is going to go over the top of the mid-range deck. So we were just at an inherent disadvantage. Yeah, we cut the Legion's End, that's the card that would help here. Although long term we're still going to struggle. But yeah, if uh, the Field of the Dead decks are still very popular, then maybe we do have to play some Legion Sands anyway. It's just that the other two drops we're playing right now are much more synergistic in our deck. Chandra... okay. What are we doing with Chandra? So they might think they have lethal, but we've got the Disfigure. Alright, well, that's just rude. Playing a Chandra and an Agent of Treachery in the same turn. And let's do one more here. Alright, pretty decent hand against an aggro opponent. We'll try it. Temple of Mystery, so... Generally speaking, Temple of Mystery is probably not amazing for us. Since it usually implies some sort of ramp deck, Blue-Green Flash is probably also not great. And Field of the Dead decks, as we saw last game, also not what we want to be facing. Looks like blue-green flash with anticipate here. So the goal is gonna be to try and resolve a dread presence somehow. It's gonna be difficult, but you never know. So I could just bump with a fun lurker. I could play a play crafter, but I probably want to save this until there's a creature in play. Unsummon my fun lurker, sure. Don't mind if I do. So now I can try and bait out the counterspell. Probably want to play land first in case of quench still. Let that resolve. And I'll disfigure the sailor before they get a chance to untap. Alright, hopefully they don't have a counterspell lined up for Dread Presence, but they probably do. Especially if they're missing a land drop here. So maybe the play this turn is just to play Heraldic Banner. But if they're holding like quenches, 
I kind of want to play around those by just developing my mana first. So I could go a Swamp Banner, or I could play Banner, save Swamp for Dread Presence. But I feel like I just want to play my land out to play around Quench here. And if they want to counter this, so be it. Alright, negates. It's gonna be interesting if I draw land, whether I play it before playing Dread Presence or afterwards, in case of Quench again, making me pay two extra mana. Blast Zone. Well, Blast Zone is a perfect draw here, in a, in a sense, to play around Quench, since I don't miss out on any value. And I get to play around Quench. Another Sabotage. Alright, I mean, we're slowly running the opponent out of counterspells. So, if we top deck like a Bolasa Citadel or Liliana, we're in great shape. Just a land. So I want to hold those for Dread Presence now, I think. So I can play Crafter to make him discard. All the cards they would be holding at this point are probably somewhat relevant. So I didn't mind running it out there. Alternatively, I could start building up my Blast Zone up to 4 to kill an Ambusher. On the other hand, they could just be discarding like a Quench here, which is probably not too relevant anymore. Very dualist to sacrifice, fair enough. It's kind of the same as just discarding it, to be honest. But they just tapped two mana. So that probably implies they don't have another cheap counter spell here. So end of turn I'll put an extra counter on my blast soon. Just a banner. Sabotage, so that's number three. Alright. Thrilled Mystic in the graveyard, so they definitely have a lot of action in hand, just looking for land four here. So my guess is, like, one Ambusher, one Mystic, or a mix of two Ambushers, two Mystics. Still no land four. So this is our window to resolve a powerful card. Well, it is a powerful card, it's only one drop, but uh, if it resolves it could give the opponent some issues, so it's actually not bad. Spectral Sailor doesn't matter when they're stuck on three. And another one. Hmm. Alright, fair enough. Well, now I know that I shouldn't bother killing one of them if they have two. Definitely gonna put Blaston up to four here for Ambusher. Guess I'm fine playing out a land now. And that way I can pump the knights as well as activate Blast Zone. So I'm definitely pumping once. Question is do I pump a second time? Or do I keep Blast Zone up? I think I'm supposed to keep a Blast Zone for Ambusher. Opponent just activates Sailor. Alright, so we're slowly falling behind here. The Knight gets in a bit of damage, but the opponent's getting ahead on cards. So again, need to find one of our Heavy hitters before the opponent draws more counter spells. They've used their fair share of sabotages already, but still a couple of frilled mystics in there. Start by attacking. That's okay. So now I can tap out of Blast Zone since they can't ambusher me. I 
Oh, I thought that they didn't assign blockers. Otherwise, I wouldn't have pumped as much, but... Oh, well. So I should have still had my Swamp in hand in case I drew a Dread Presence. And also to play around Quench. Fairy Vandal, and we make them discard a Frilled Mystic. That sounds like a good deal. Yeah, I thought our opponent already said uh, no blocks, which is why I started pumping, but I guess uh, they didn't yet. Alright, so 8 mana, can make it 9. So I guess I should play my land and then attack with both. So these mana sinks are actually pretty good against the flash deck, just being able to play one or two mana creature and then have it be relevant in the late game. So no point in pumping this more, so I'll just pump this three times. Not sure whether they're like main phase activating the Sailor. Like, I get that they want to pump the Vandal, but don't they want to keep up uh, some counter spells too? Massacre Girl kills a Sailor. I think I'm supposed to attack first. If I attack with a Fun Lurker, they're forced to still block the Knight. So I guess it's a free roll. Unless they have like an Unsummon or another Duelist. So they're dead on board if I just pump three times. So they must have something. So it could be an unsummon, could be like duelist after we pump to keep themselves alive. Could also pump once with the fun lurker and then still play massacre girl to kill the vandal. Eh, let's do that then. This doesn't beat like a quench, but it's better if the massacre girl resolves. Uh, let's find out. They might be considering playing another creature to kill my Knight of the Ebon Legion. Uh, they're just unsummoning their own Sailor so it doesn't die and doesn't lose a Vandal. Fair enough. They're still facing a 4-4 Menace and a Knight of the Ebon Legion. That's basically the Abyss. So they did have the unsummon, so if I did go to pump the Knight of the Ebon Legion three times, I would have uh, bounced it. So I guess I liked our play in the end. So their plan is to chum block Knight of Avon Legion, take four. Yeah, let's go to combat. Didn't think I want to play the Bolas of Citadel first. Just see what happens here. So are they drawing? Or do they have something else they want to play? They have something else they want to play. So they could have Ambusher, they could have Frilled Mystic. So let's say they have a Frilled Mystic, I play Citadel. Then they'll have 6 power in play. And I'm still not dead. If it's an Ambusher, I'm taking 7. But then they can also start making Wolves. Which isn't great, but then I can still Blast Zone and they'll, they'll just be left with a Wolf. So I think I'm okay running out to Citadel still. Just an negate. So they still have a 4 mana play, it's gonna be an ambusher, fair enough. But we're not in danger, and then I can just blast zone it next turn. Chum take four. That's fine by me. Yeah, got our opponent all the way to one. They've got one card in hand. And we have two lethal threats. One of which has menace. Main face cutthroat and concede. 
All right, this was quite a uh, slugfest here. But yeah, Knight of the Ebon Legion, we drew it pretty late in the game, but it was still the MVP. So yeah, Knight of the Ebon Legion is just a great card against a uh, Simic Flash deck. All right, reasonable hand, I guess. Against the turn one mountain, I guess I'll play Enforcer. I think I keep the Enforcer on defense. The one damage is... Pff, or the two damage, I guess, could be relevant, but... Um, yeah, like if they play a war boss, I want to be able to block it. Although now we also can consider letting them keep a token to set up the Massacre Girl. Gets rid of a light with the stage. I think I'm just playing defense. Alright, so now Liliana Minus looks pretty appealing. Man, Banner's doing some work here. Look at this. Gotta watch out for the Spitfire, since that can represent a ton of damage out of nowhere, especially with Cavalcade already in play. So that's uh, threatening 13 damage, which isn't quite lethal. So I guess I have no way of killing the Spitfire, so I should probably keep the Spirit back. So let's just send in Knights. And then I can pump once. Yeah, opponent seems pretty dead. Well, that was quite a beating. Heraldic Banner seems to be doing a lot of work in this deck. The combination of ramp and pumping our creatures are both very relevant. Alright, sweet. So, the mono black deck was actually pretty impressive. We didn't get to see the Dread Presence in action too much, but did see Banner, Knight of Ebon Legion, Shine, Liliana did some work, and got a few appearances of uh, Massacre Girl and Cavalier. Our deck is still going to be weak to Field of the Dead decks with this configuration. Could potentially make it a little bit better by adding the uh, two mana removal here, Allegiance Ends, which can deal with all the zombies at once but it's still going to be a bad matchup for the style of deck. So probably need some more tools, maybe after sideboard, to have a better chance there. But overall, quite uh, digging what's going on, and you never know what other tools we might get in Eldraine. Sweet. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.